Here we are in the next episode of our ferret and soap opera. Having already looked at the ferret and the equipment, we are now going to go ferreting. The first thing is the ferrets. As I like working light or white coloured ferrets, the first thing I do is to distinguish between each individual. So here I am using a blue livestock marker. So I can see easily when they return above ground which one is doing all of the work. The next job is to collar the ferrets up. Here I'm using my MK3M ferret finder collars because I never work any ferret without one of these fitted. Once fitted, I lay some long nets around the warren we're about to ferret. As you can see here, the wind has blown the bagging of the net the wrong way, but I still need to have a net in position. So the worst that can happen, the rabbit will hit the net, and if it doesn't get caught, it's going to bounce back and either go under the warren or get back netted in one of the other nets we have laid. But it is not going to escape. You see here we have the bagging blowing the right way on the other side of the hedge, and because we've got a chain link fencing into a private compound, I don't want the rabbits just dipping under the fence and making good their escape. So I've overcompensated and I've put this long net down here to prevent anything from escaping us today. As you can see from this aerial view of a hedgerow, especially when ferreting with a dog, I dissect the rabbit's escape route with numerous stop or short long nets placed through the hedge line. I only use the fixed net long net system. Laid out of a basket, this has made laying a long net almost idiot proof. The purse nets are then laid over which holes we think will be most useful. It may be every hole or just the ones we fancy. Once the ferret is entered, the rabbit has two choices. Bolt or pay the consequences. Then we will have to rethink our tactics. If all goes according to plan and the rabbit falls, dispatch it in the net efficiently, but above all else, humanely. Lay the dead rabbit on the ground, still inside the net, and relay a fresh net over the hole to prevent another rabbit making a bolt for freedom. When all the action has ceased and you have time, remove the rabbit from the net. Once removed, make good the net, fold it up and get it ready for the next time it is called upon. Make sure the peg is firmly in the ground as it's the point of resistance the net requires to work properly. One of the reasons I use Bella is the speed in which she can reach the netted rabbit, far quicker than what I can. Upon reaching them both, she releases and lets the ferret do his job. But when juvenile rabbits skip through a net or appear from under a pile of dead leaves, she's on hand to mop them up. As Sutty illustrates here, the dog is a lot quicker at getting this rabbit once it's sneaked through a little purse net. A ferreting dog has a far different view on how we ferret. Their senses are far more horned, almost telepathic in at what is going on under the ground, almost reaching a netted rabbit even before we think it has bolted. But sooner or later we will need to give the ferrets a helping hand and use both your ferret finder and spade. When digging, I like to use a probe. This ensures I know exactly where the spade is going and avoids any accidents. Because although the ferrets learn to move away when you break through, you must never take this for granted.
This is where a well handled ferret is a pleasure to work with. When digging, especially under trees, you may need a more robust type of spade to help you break through the roots. Leave. Leave. I'm often asked why do you dig so much? Well, on many occasions we will pull two or three or more rabbits out of a stop end. If you do your maths and add it over a 12 month period, this soon adds up. Sooty here had a troublesome dig but he pulled out a few rabbits so all the huffing and puffing was well worth it. This is a difference in ensuring another satisfied customer. You may see the rabbits kicking and twitching once dispatched. Contrary to common belief, this is just the nerves of the rabbit. The rabbit was dispatched instantly in a humane fashion and death was instantaneous. All this wouldn't be possible without a ferret finder. Gloves on and in a hygienic fashion, the rabbits are gutted and grated, ready for the butcher. As the ferrets march off, they're already thinking about what will happen in the next episode of this rabbit and soap.